Hello again, uh, we are here today with another Star Trek book review. Uh, I'm thinking I'm probably going to actually start calling these book discussions. I'm not very good at a review uh, because I seem to like everything that I read. Uh, so we're just going to really talk about it and uh, I, I liked it. Uh, what we're talking about today is Star Trek The Next Generation uh, number three, The Children of Hamlin. So I got a, a nice shot of the cover there with Picard, uh, Dr. Crusher here, and this character here is uh, Ruth, who uh, plays big in the story. <clears throat> uh, this is a novel by Carmen Carter, you know, on the front it reads, An enig enigmatic stranger holds the key to a decades-old mystery, and a galactic quest for vengeance. <clears throat> I'll read the back to you now. Uh, Star Trek, The Next Generation, The Children of Hamlin. The Hamlin Massacre. Every Starfleet officer knows the tale. The tiny Federation outpost of Hamlin was destroyed, its entire adult population ruthlessly slaughtered before the first defense shields could be raised. Even worse, the colony's children disappeared without a trace, abducted by the aliens who attacked with a ferocity and speed that outmatched their Starfleet pursuers. Now, 50 years later, the Karai ships have appeared again. But this time, the Federation is ready. This time, the Karai must pay for what they need. The precious metals can only be bought with the Hamlin children still living with their captors. This time, the Karai must face Captain Jean-Luc Picard and the crew of the Starship Enterprise. Uh, sounds very exciting. Uh, reading that, you would maybe think that they're they're going to be going and uh, blasting in and rescuing all these children uh, and destroying these ships, uh, but uh, not the case. It turns out to be a, a more of a diplomatic exchange. Uh, I'll jump right into it. Uh, it's got a kind of a main plot, and then there's a subplot, and then they all they kind of come together in the end. So the uh, Enterprise is out on a routine patrol. And they get a distress call from a Constitution class, uh, the USS Farrell. And they uh, rush to the Farrell's aid and find that it's basically been uh, trapped in the net of this Karai ship. And the Karai ship uh, basically looks like, as illustrated here, a bunch of bubbles. And so the bubbles have trapped this uh, Constitution class ship and uh, are, are crushing it. So the Enterprise is able to come to its rescue and kind of fight off this ship and, and uh, reach out and, and beam the survivors aboard uh, before before they're all killed. Uh, amongst the crew, which is just a small skeleton crew on this feral, there are uh, two other survivors. There's Ruth there, and then also the mysterious Andrew Delor, who at first you really you don't like because uh, he kind of comes in with this attitude uh, but uh, I think his character was well done. Uh, in the end, I, I, I found myself liking him more. Well, they come aboard uh, with basically what is a top secret mission from the Federation. And what they're supposed to do is contact these Karai, and then using uh, Ruth as a translator, they are to kind of reach out to them and, and try to get back these children that were stolen. And, and that was the mission they were trying to do on the Feral, uh, something went wrong, and uh, it did not work out. So now Picard is ordered by Starfleet Command that he has to assist Delor, follow his orders, and contacting these Karai and getting back these children. Uh, so you know, reluctantly, but he's got to do it, and that's what they have to do. So <clears throat> they're able to track the Karai, and they follow them, and then this Ruth sends them a message using a flute. Uh, through, through their communicators, uh, a musical message, which is like basically what only these people respond to. Uh, so they do reach out and they contact them, and they're able to, uh, through negotiations, bring back one of these children, uh, and it's a two-year-old boy. And then uh, in their scanning, they find out that there's also like an older human on there uh, who is not returned. So the Karai take off, and they chase after them. Uh, basically, they catch up to them, tractor beam on, and they're able to rescue this this uh, older guy, this older human that's been with the Karai his whole life. Uh, only when they bring him on board, uh, he hates it, and he basically goes catatonic, and he's he's dying, and they've got to find a way to save him. Uh, I'm going kind of deep into it here uh, without uh, really talking about, I guess, the, 
the main theme of the book, which you would think is uh, these people, these Karai, are they came to this colony, Hamlin, and they destroyed everyone, and they kidnapped the children. It's like, it's like these are like the worst, the worst of the worst, and you expect you want to go in there with phasers blazing and just blast them out. Uh, but the whole kind of theme throughout this is that they've got to to make this work because these people are so different. They've got to negotiate in this in this way. So, uh, I I really liked it. Like I said I, I got into it and I, I I read through it fairly quickly. I I felt that they kind of covered all covered all the char <laughs> the characters well. Uh, Everyone was portrayed well. I didn't feel anyone kind of felt out of place. Again, the can character of Andrew D. Lorry kind of comes off at first. You, you don't like him because you don't like someone who's kind of coming in and trying to take command of you know your crew. Uh, but then he kind of you kind of see what his mission is and see what he's trying to do. Uh, so I would say for this book, uh, th that'll end the non-spoiler section of the review and discussion. So if you uh, don't want to be spoiled, you can go ahead and stop it here and go pick up The Children of Hamlin and give it a read. It's just a short uh, 250 pages. And then come back and uh, join me here for the next part. So uh, so this is for everyone that's read it and, or who doesn't care and just wants me to tell them what happened here. Uh, as I said, so in the end, they've got the, the older human who's been on the ship his whole life uh, and he's not doing well. He's basically dying. They're trying to think of every, everything they can do to save him, and they can't. Uh, the subplot here is that this whole time the Enterprise is supposed to be transporting these farmers from one colony to another. Uh, their story isn't too important to the, uh, you know, the ongoing story in the book until the end when it finds out the colony they're supposed to be going to has been destroyed by another Karai ship, a much bigger one than the one they encountered before. So now they have to chase after this Karai ship in the hopes that maybe some of the children from this colony are aboard. So they do chase after it. They are able to get contact of it with Ruth. And uh, <clears throat> now Ruth, I didn't, I didn't mention before, she was uh, one of these children that was rescued years ago from the Karai. So she spent her basically her whole young life on the ship and then came out and then was... Um, kind of worked as a translator to get these other children out. So Ruth communicates with the Karai and there is one child that they took from this new colony and uh, she with her flute so nobody knows what she's saying uh, communicates and says that she's agreed to an exchange of you know precious metals for this child. So she beams over and then immediately uh, they beam the child over and then the Karai ship takes off. And they, they speed off after it, thinking that the cry maybe pulled something and they're trying to get away with Ruth. Well, here it turns out that the whole point of this was to get... Ruth wanted to get back with the Karai. And hopefully, through her experience with humans and Karai, teach them uh, that killing all these people is wrong and there's a different way of doing it. So maybe that part of it was kind of silly. But uh, in the end, I still liked the book. I, I think it was really good. Uh, <clears throat> I guess one of the things uh, that's kind of weird is you never actually see the alien. You only ever see their ship. They're never pictured. You do hear their voices, which basically they describe as uh, sounding like, you know, like pipe organs playing. So uh, very musical. So uh, that's kind of interesting. You never see them. You have to picture them in your own mind. They live in big bubbles and swim around all the time. Who knows what they look like? So uh, this book takes place somewhere between... Symbiosis, which I think is episode 22 or 23, and Skin of Evil, which of course is the episode where Tashi Yar uh, is killed. So I was wondering if this was going to be the last novel with Tashi Yar, and uh, we'll all be happy to know it is not. Uh, this week we're going to be going through number four, which is Survivors. And uh, Survivors is a novel by Jean Laura, where Tasha comes face to face with the shattered dreams of her past. So maybe this is a, a Lita in the, the final novel featuring Tasha as uh, the chief of security. Well, I think that's going to be all for now about the children of Hamlin. Uh, 
it was good. Pick it up. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below, and I will get back with you as soon as I can. Uh, everybody have a good week, and I'll see you next time.